Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. Welcome to the Movieverse podcast show, uh, where we are continuing our road to the Oscars 2015. This is our third review, and we're going to do The Grand Budapest Hotel. This is a film by the patron god of hipster, Mr. Wes Anderson himself, nice. there you go. starring a ginormous <laughs> cast of Ralph Fiennes, you know, F. Mary Abraham, Adrian Brody, Willem Dafoe, Jeff Goldblum, Harvey Cattell, Jude Law, Bill, Bill Murray, Edward Norton, Owen Wilson. The list goes on and on and on and on. Anyways, um, would you like to attempt to cover the story of this bizarre tale before we get into just how delightful this film really is? Uh, all I'm going to say, actually, is that this is, in fact, a story that's being told in somewhat modern times, I would assume. Or, no, sorry, it's a book that's being read, so it's imagined as the man telling the story mm -hmm. in somewhat recent times, about when he was back in the 80s, and he met the man who owned the Grand Budapest Hotel, who then told him a story about the original concierge of the Grand Budapest Hotel back in the 30s. And Storyception. <laughs> you can go ahead and take it from there. <laughs> oh my God, this is um, this is, might be a tricky, tricky film. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to try to tackle that. To to tackle, um, to summarize it grossly, we'll say this is the adventures of um, Mr. Gustav, <laughs> if you will, played by Ralph Fiennes, is the concierge of um, the Grand Budapest Hotel, which is in aging yet still lavish um, hotel in a fictional European country in like some alpine region. Do you remember what the name of the country is? Um, I'm, no, I don't, but I can, yeah. I can probably find it. Um, yeah, so it basically centers around Mr. Zero, who um, you know is F. Mary Abraham's character. Zero Mustafa, who is a lobby boy at this hotel, and he meets uh, the concierge Mr. Gustav and they kind of form a work relationship that becomes a friendship and it tells the story of Gustav's life and his adventures and how over the top he is and um, I don't know his just love for elderly women his love for elderly ladies or the, uh, rich and blonde. The, the, <laughs> the tougher cuts as he calls them but he prefers them um, yeah the cheaper cuts the cheaper cuts yeah and that's kind of, you know, that's to grossly, you know, summarize this story. Because it's all about a lot more than that. Oh, it's, right. about, it's about an adventure between, uh, basically, between Zero and Mr. Gustav. And it's, um, I don't know, it's quite delightful. This is Wes Anderson we're talking about. It's his signature. Um, I don't know. No one else has style like Wes Anderson. No one really does films quite like him. It's not for everyone, but this is um, this is his best work yet. I, I feel this say. is definitely the culmination of Wes Anderson's entire career. Mm -hmm. This it's it's remarkable. I mean, especially if you've watched a lot of his other work. You know, I was a big fan of uh, Royal Tenenbaums, as we were talking about earlier. Uh, some other ones are kind of hit or miss, in my opinion. But I mean. He always had this kind of different style where it seems a little more artistic in the way that he shoots his scenes and the way that he kind of has his set designs, especially even it's whether or not it's a set or a location shoot. Mm -hmm. He seems to always have this sort of different appeal in mind, right? And this is the culmination. You got like offsetting colors everywhere where everything just kind of stands out, looks perfect. It's extremely painter, uh, painterly in its approach. Mm -hmm. as a visual medium inside of a film. You know what I mean? You don't really see a film like this ever before or maybe again. This is the Grand Budapest is, like I said, it's the culmination of Wes Anderson's uh, career in my opinion. This is amazing. Amazing movie if you're if we're talking just visually. And not even, it's a great movie all around but mm -hmm. visually it's better than anything I've seen in, in, I don't know, probably this is probably the best thing I've ever seen in that aspect. I'll agree with you there. If you want to talk pure aesthetic, if you will, the man he is turning a painting into a movie. If like, if that makes any sense, like the attention to detail. The boy with Apple. Yeah, boy with Apple. The attention to framing, the symmetry. He goes, he goes through great lengths to set up these amazing looking shots, even if they're only for a moment or even like less than a second shots. Like montage shots, he'll go through and say every single clip in that montage is set up beautifully. Um, oh, it's just gorgeous. No one does it. No one does it like Wes Anderson, and I 
you know, he maybe, you know, gets a lot of flack for being a hipster filmmaker or whatever. And uh, not all of his films have been for me or um, have done all that well because, you know, they don't ap appeal to ed to um, the widest range of audiences, I think. I think this one transcends all that. But, but go on top of that, if you are a film nerd, if you are like, a, you know, a film hipster, if you will, this is like a wet dream for sure. <laughs> like, everything is just gorgeous in this film if talking purely visual I mean the story and the acting is uh, quite good too but I think it's worth a watch just by like just for the visuals because, oh, the, the um, design and the architecture of all of the like different sets and the scenes it's just amazing and it's absolutely like astounding the fact that they put so much effort in and like you said even for scenes that are mere seconds you know what I mean? The way that they compose it with like the long shots and close-ups are primarily what's used throughout the entire film. And the back and forth uh, between them because of that have this bold sort of just uh, grandiose feel that I actually is... like I, yes, admire, yeah. I, I admire this the visual uh, uh, aspect of this film more than anything I've ever seen. It's insane. It's, it's crazy that they pulled that off. I agree with you. It's like I don't know. It's it's an achievement. We're not talking about, Yeah, we're not talking about something where people are going, "Oh, you know, it's a visual masterpiece because they spent you know a billion dollars on special effects and CGI." We're talking about something that is crafted by with hand. precision, <laughs> like a symphony orchestra. It mm -hmm. just flows so well and fluidly throughout the entire film. It's an absolutely amazing motif behind. A, a beautiful dialogue and original story. It's extremely intriguing. Honestly, I know I'm probably kind of raving a little bit about it because uh, I've just recently watched it again. So but have I. And it, no, honestly, I agree with it, you, dude. It, it's the best thing I've seen in years. Mm, I agree. I really loved this movie. I was quite surprised. Um, it's like, I don't know. Uh, my decision has yet to be made, but it could be the best movie of the year, I think, just by sheer craftsmanship that has went into it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's kind of a celebration of old school filmmaking too because um, you know according to Wikipedia which take it or leave it this only had a um, 30 million dollar budget <laughs> and he did all of this Wow he did all of this by hand that hotel you see it, sure it doesn't look real it has that weird like painterly storybook look to it that's because they made the model by hand and they used that like this is a celebration of that old school kind of filmmaking that um, is getting more and more forgotten these days with, you know, slap some CGI on the bitch. And I really, I dig Wes Anderson's, um, you know, his throwback to this old school style that he yeah. um, has made all his own at the same time. It's fucking incredible. It's an awesome movie. <laughs> it is. You really can't say enough about it. That's the impressive part. It's not, and that's what I mean when I say because I mean, with Royal Tenenbaums or even, you know, up until Moonrider's Kingdom, even just the kind of differences in when you see the offsetting colors and the sort of uh, yeah. techniques he uses with camera movement, even in that film, it's it's just so much better than all of those. It's it's the absolute tip of the Wes Anderson mountain. It's it's hilarious. And, I mean, even if we're going to move on just from that, even we got to talk about the framing, too. I mean, it's yes. absolutely gorgeous, the way that they set up the shots, even when it's close conversational shots at either a medium shot or a close-up mm -hmm. the background is set up almost as if it were going to be a long shot with extravagant pieces all set up in the in, in behind it whether it be you know architecture of the of stairs and railings that you see going behind it as it pans across and then mm -hmm. back again when it's in front the well, lights yeah, and, the, like, yeah, painted the lights and mountains in the background. And, oh, yeah exactly it, it's just it's absolute finesse filmmaking at its finest mm-hmm and that's why I believe this film, if not Best Picture, should at least take home as many awards for, you know, movie production as possible. <laughs> uh, Wes Anderson probably deserves the directorial nod this year and, like, you know, cinematography, editing, things like that. They deserve to take home almost all of them because. Are, are, are they nominated for Best Original Script, did you say, or Screenplay? Yeah, Best Original Screenplay, of course. I think they should win that as well. It is in which the fucking thing was written by Wes Anderson and one other guy. So props to him. Um, they're up for best editing, uh, costume design, 
cinematography. Well, because you probably agree with me too, especially with uh, in regard to the uh, writing of the film. Makeup even though and hairstyle. With Wes sorry. Anderson. Oh, I'm sorry, not a problem. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you probably agree with me, right? That The fact that it was... The way that it was written was just so sharp, even though it, it was still kind of that dry humor in certain points, but oh, the yeah, way that it was, did have... it was so sharp, it never seemed to stall. It was never like a dull moment in a movie that's mostly dialogue, right? Mm -hmm. It so. didn't, uh, it never stalled, and it is that signature kind of offbeat, slightly dry humor, but mm -hmm. it's done um, It's done so well in like the the story flows so quickly it doesn't have time to like really get on your nerves or become dry because it's it's moved briskly along by the story and um a lot of that goes to you know mr gustav's character ralph fine's character because he carries so much of that dialogue he's um he's very sharp he's very um witty you know he talks very fast he goes into elaborate fucking poems and shit but where that could have gotten dry the story yeah. just moves it along and um, I think Wes Anderson is coming into his, like, this is, you know, like you said, the ac accumulation of everything he's learned in the last decade or whatever of filmmaking in his own, like, weird style of filmmaking. He's, you know, perfected it, if you will. Well, and one of the things, too, like you were saying before about someone getting on your nerves, too, one of the problems with a lot of Wes Anderson films That's is the what, fact yeah. that a lot of characters, too, tend to get on your nerves a bit because they're just a little too much. In this, it seems like it was all done just to that fine point. I mean, whether it's uh, Mr. Gustav or uh, Zero, who's played by uh, Tony uh, Revolori. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope I said that his name right. But Or Willem Dafoe's character. Uh, it's just it's that perfect amount you know what i mean it's not exactly over the top but it's it's just perfect where it's just like holy shit this is this is a cool character and you follow it throughout the entire thing i i found myself uh the first time and pretty much every time i've watched it since i noticed that i didn't realize that about an hour and a half of the film had already passed when it had mm -hmm. and that to me is one of the best signs you could possibly have in a film that a lot of people, you know what I mean? There's, there's not too many people that you're not going to relate to any of the things that are really happening in the film. Oh, That's God, not no. the point. This is it's a... not that type of It's just so goddamn entertaining. Mm -hmm. And it's so beautifully crafted that it just grabs your attention and doesn't let go. It's insane the amount of detail they got into this, especially with what you're saying, that they only had uh, an alleged uh, $30 million budget. That's just unfathomable to me. It's It's absolutely impressive. And I mean, the the screenplay is just—it's such an original story. It's it's different. It's uh, it's intriguing the entire time because you don't really know what's going on. You kind of figure that Adrian Brody obviously killed his own mother, mm -hmm. but I like the whole thing where he's got that kind of little Gestapo with him, and it's almost like they're the Nazis. Yeah, yeah, the uh, brought his henchmen led by Willem Dafoe's character, who's appro yeah. appropriately terrifying. <laughs> Like, I'll go to bed with all my friends, just punches them straight in the face. Uh, it's, it's glorious. I mean, we could pretty much go on forever talking about how visually uh, stunning this film is, and it should be seen by anyone who loves film for that reason and that reason alone. Um, we should probably talk about some story and character. Where would you <laughs> like to start? Well, like I was saying, I mean, it's, it's a beautiful story that's written very well the dialogue is performed and executed absolutely tremendously uh well it's it's surprising to me especially given that i've never seen that uh the guy that plays zero uh tony i'm not going to say his last name so i'm pr pretty sure i'll get it wrong but he does a fantastic job and i've never seen him before i thought the way that him and ralph fines connected on that uh kind of level with the relationship is absolutely hilarious adrian brody did a good job uh, I thought he was pretty funny in the movie, especially the way he was just a dick the entire time. Mm -hmm. um, Willem Dafoe is the creepiest bastard ever. Um, Harvey Keitel. And that's how I like or, my Willem Dafoe. I like him only, to be a creepy bastard. The only person I wouldn't say is the best is Jeff Goldblum, but I mean, it's Jeff Goldblum, so he gets a pass no matter what. Especially mm -hmm. the fact that, I mean, Willem Dafoe kills his cat. So, you know. <laughs> I forgot and about that. Do you throw my cat? I, I see that's the thing I can't it all comes back to how gorgeous it is the chase scene between Willem Dafoe and Jeff Goldberg uh, Jeff Goldblum's character oh my god yeah it's, through the, it's uh, absolutely nuts through the the, the Kunst Museum yeah the museum is beautiful but uh 
it's insane, like the way that they did it, especially considering it. There's one shot, of, and especially, and I swear to God, I'll stop talking about it after this. But there, <laughs> there's there's one shot, especially where Jeff Goldblum when he's running away, right before I think that it's right before or around when uh, William Defoe's character takes his shoes off, so he walks around in socks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Jeff Trick Goldblum's I learned from Die Hard. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum's character turns around to look behind him but he's right in the frame of a circular window mm-hmm. and as he turns around you just see the, almost the silhouette with a light shade on his face where you just see the gray of, of the reflection of the glasses mm-hmm. it is just absolutely gorgeous it is and i can't imagine how long it would have taken to make to get this story to a point you know and have still that attention out to detail it's I don't know this movie oh, there's really a bunch is. of little twists and turns and it's kind of cool when Willem Dafoe's tracking him all the different little clues that he's going to find mm-hmm. and it I is a really it's... intriguing story and it's interesting oh, yeah, to see how it's just this you know unique crazy eccentric gentleman concierge of this hotel who likes to take his old lady friends to to bed can lead to this like crazy well, murder mystery murder mystery prison break <laughs> cross-country tale and it all makes sense it all just makes sense in this weird little little universe he's created well oh. done mr wes <laughs> anderson well done yeah it's it's just hilarious the way the storyline plays out too especially when you get to because i honestly was thinking the whole time that it was going to be that mr. you know mr gusov just ended up dying of something especially when they said that he was with all these ladies as he got his money and stuff like that mm-hmm. i thought he would just get like syphilis and you know, end up dying or something. I don't know. Uh-huh. Well, but then okay. it turns out that they end up getting in the same situation they got in previously on the train, where they get stopped by the government. This time it's the little Gestapo force. And I did love, absolutely loved how it transitioned from being full color to black and white for that little piece. Mm-hmm. And then uh, after he asks him, yeah. yeah, and then after he asks him what happened, he says they shot him. <laughs> yep, it does end on a offbeat, somber note. Definitely, but um, the story the story is about story basically. When it comes oh, down, yeah, yeah, when it comes down to it, at the end, it's about the importance of telling and retelling stories, and that it's okay to exaggerate because a bunch of stuff in the story is exaggerated, but you expect it to be because it's told through story, and you know, I, and then Wes Anderson is making a movie about this. You know, it all comes back around to a love of telling you know fantastic stories well i think not to is, mention too this, this is why we love it <laughs> this film's also escapism at its best as well i mean like i yeah, said definitely just don't even notice and it's not even it's not that it's something where you know a lot of people these days it's almost kind of like the message that it seemed like a uh, birdman was trying to send wes anderson did inadvertently mm-hmm. yeah. you know what i mean like, this is a film that gets by without the, like the big use of big special effects, big action uh, sequences, stuff like that. It's a beautiful, well-written story that carries a, a and I mean the performances. I mean, God, the, the dialogue is performed so well. I think that's one of the main reasons that it's not so similar to a lot of Wes Anderson's films that do seem like they get a little bit dull at points. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the main reasons it carries over too. Because I mean, like you said, Ralph Fiennes and. Uh, uh, the way that him and uh, his little buddy there, Zero, the way that they connect, oh, it's ridiculous. It is great. He's this. The note on the dialogue is that it is like this um, older style, you know, 19, mm. early 1900s. Don't play with her. Yeah, some really fast and sharp dialogue with some words that, um, you know, you might not even know the, the meaning of, but it just flows so good. You're like, okay, not this is great. I'm gonna allow this. And how he, how uh, Mr. Gustav just goes off into elaborate multi-page poems out of nowhere, and it's all like this, you know, pretty incredible dialogue. But then the movie just cuts it off, like he always does this shit. Like this is just another day with Mr. Gustav, where he goes into this beautifully written poem. Um, it's well, when that. he goes to say that the, the, he goes to say that to him after they stop him on the train the first time and they slam him against the thing yeah, against yeah. the wall. He said, goes to say it before, and he's like, "Oh fuck it." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, he's 
I'm or, really. Oh, fuck. He says something like that. Ralph Fiennes. I don't know why he's not nominated for best actor for this because, or at least best supporting, if you want to call Zero the main actor, whatever. Yeah. He he deserves something. He his performance I think is incredible and. Oh, it's amazing. The best I've seen out of him in ages, and it's just, I don't know. <clears throat> And he's one of, like, six <laughs> characters that is, you know, really has a lot of screen time and is really well done. I can't say enough good about this film. It's hard to say anything bad about this film, really. When it, it really is. When and it I comes mean, I, down to it. Yeah, I'm trying to be <laughs> objectionable, but, I mean, I, I, I really can't... Uh, I can see how the um, the whole... I can't think of anything. <laughs> I can see how the whole aesthetic and art value might be lost on some people who just plain and simple don't care. But that's... I guess so, yep. That's not me. <laughs> so uh, yes. I don't know what to tell you because if you don't appreciate the art of film, then... This go might, fuck yourself. Yeah. Well, oh, hey, sorry, I thought, we were, I thought that's where we were going with it. Well, yeah. <laughs> one, go fuck yourself. And two, educate yourself because this shit is impressive it is an art form like no other and Wes Anderson he um he elevated it with this movie in in a unique way I don't know like you said I don't know if we're gonna see a movie like this for a long time you know one quite so so uh tight if you will I would agree too and I mean as far as editing goes and a lot of the other technical side of it too the editing is even like the editing superb the camera work is superb uh the directing is obviously amazing the direction of the film is fantastic the pacing is amazing the writing is fantastic the designs <laughs> it's uh, just it's all around uh, an amazing amazing piece of film that mm -hmm. i i just i don't understand i, I can't even, i still can't comprehend in my brain after I just think about it, you know what I mean? Once I reflect <laughs> on the film itself, yeah. it's it's more impressive than when you're watching it, too. The, the second you get out and you start thinking about it, you realize just how impressive it is. Mm -hmm. It is. It like It's a film that warrants a second and third watching, I feel, because you will catch stuff. And on my you know second and third watching i think i've watched probably four or five times now it's on netflix everyone should be watching yeah, exactly. everyone should be watching this for eight bucks a month go watch this fucking movie but the more you watch it you realize is was it just like a really good first impression with this film that it was so you know delightful and such a fun story or you know is it really that good and you watch it that second and third time you're like no this is fucking airtight man this is well done it's um i don't know i think it might be the best film of the year i would have to agree with that as well i i i, I just honestly i can't think of anything else i mean the biopics are cool and all but there's three of them that are nominated for best <laughs> there's picture. always three of them and i mean realistically something that's this original and different but at the same time exactly what you need that's it's just it's mm -hmm. almost perfect, if not perfect. And it's one of those things that and it has to just surpass that because of that fact. If it doesn't, then, I mean, all they want are tearjerkers. Yep. I mean, this this has... It kind of had... You're kind of right. It kind of does have to win or else it's kind of, you know, proving again... It's, it's, for, the sim it's similar to the artist. When yeah, the artist it's proving, proving for another year that they're not just looking at the craft of film they're looking for some other you know some tearjerker some political bullshit or something like that mm -hmm. because i mean it's kind of so i mean all the other films are great that i've seen so far are nominated more or less pretty great but this is like in a class all of its own it's mvp <laughs> it's um you know best made movie for sure it just has to be right I would agree. It has to be. Mm -hmm. Please yeah. let it be. Yeah. Movies like this need more attention. It, it, you're kind of right. It is kind of like The Artist. Someone took a chance on, even though the, I don't think The Artist was as groundbreaking as everyone says it was. This is the fucking... No. It's a I was just, film. It, I'm just saying, it's it, similar to it that, was cool the recent The Artist one. In yeah, mind. it was cool that uh, somebody could do something a little different and still get recognized. This is someone doing something different but it's good <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's really fucking good being recognized. yeah it's really fucking good um 
yeah, I don't know what else to say. We could talk more about performances, I guess, or um, you know, continue to <laughs> to ramble wildly about how we love this. <laughs> uh, realistically, I mean, if we're talking about people who aren't familiar with Wes Anderson's work, or maybe yeah. you've seen it and you just haven't liked a single thing, it's just not up your alley. Too quirky, I mean, it's, too whatever. It, and yeah. and it's always been like dry witted, dry witty humor. You know what I mean? So. The way that it's crafted in this one, though, is so much nicer than mm -hmm. how it's been in the past. It seems like it's mixed in well with fluid uh, fluid dialogue that just kind of keeps going inside of a conversation where half the time you just kind of think from it, like, what, did he just say that? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it kind of is one of those things where it just kind of pops back into the back of your brain and you just kind of like, I can't believe you just said that. But it's... He, it's yeah, he does. Sorry. Yeah. And I mean... The way that the uh, all the characters' relationships are, even with the what's that uh, the group called the Cross Key Society or the Society of the Cross Keys or something? Um, the, yeah, the, Society the, of yeah. the Cross Keys. Yeah, yeah the, the uh, what is it? Basically, the uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, the, <laughs> uh, the Freemasons of the Cross. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's no, yeah, yeah, I couldn't makes, think of that for the longest time. Uh, no, but anyway. it makes sense, yeah. It is like the Freemasons of the, that, the concierge. This weird uh, group of strange hotel runners all yeah, played by famous I did, people. I, I did <laughs> like that they, uh, they all kind of had that weird little connection where they do that thing to get it set up, but mm -hmm. I thought that was... Things like that, the little intricate, delicate details, the way that it's set up, I thought were performed really well. And, I mean, those guys are in it for what? Five seconds. You got Bill Burr, uh, Bill Murray, uh, Bob Badlane, or whatever his name is. Yeah, uh, yeah. some pretty big uh, names that just stop by. Mister, Mister, I'm and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's kind of proof of Wes Anderson's, you know, talent. If nothing else, is that uh, uh, Wilson? Is that yeah? He might make weird fucking movies that aren't for everybody. But look at all the actors he's able to come do his thirty million dollar movie. Like you know, none of these guys made a gigantic paycheck up front, like signing on for some you know Guardians of the Galaxy or what have you. They all did it out of the out of a love for cinema, right? That they know Wes Anderson has as well. And I really like to see that you know professionals still give a shit, and that it isn't all about the money. No. Yeah. And, it, and like we were saying, too, I mean, it is truly unique uh, in the way that it's done. I mean, there's no way that anybody can say they've seen a movie that's like this. There's no possible way. I just, if you say that, I, I, I'd, I'd challenge you to at least write a little message and say what that is so I can give it a viewing because I clearly haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I mean, back to the way that they do that chasing the, the like the lighting and the, it's just everything that's structured in this movie is so perfect the lighting in the film the way that they do it in certain scenes is so well crafted with the way that it's artistically done with for instance when he's running through the hallway of the little soldier bus or whatever it is yeah and it's yeah. got the individual lights on there with the darkness I, I just, that whole thing with the shadows and everything too and there's oh. and there's dozens of those scenes, man. It's it's every it's fucking scene. It's there's everything is. He loves the symmetry too. You'll notice that his uh, tons of scenes are set up beautifully with like symmetry. Everything, nothing is up by accident in this film. Basically, like you know, uh, yeah. it isn't just it isn't just point the camera. This isn't like an improv based film or anything like that. Everything is done for a reason, and it's woven together beautifully. And um, I don't know, as, a, as two guys who are into somewhat the craft of making film itself, this is, you know, this is a celebration of it, basically, right? Like, it's, it's something to look at and be like, oh, so that's how you do something different that still works with everything else, right? It's cool. It's very cool. <laughs> yeah, it, it's funny, too, because especially with the biopics, being that up for the Best Picture nomination as well. You never really know what you're going to get with the ones that you hear about that are kind of different. Yeah. But when I first heard that, uh, I hadn't seen it when I first heard that it was going in there because I don't even recall when it came out. But I, I saw that it was on Netflix and then started watching it and I thought, oh my God, this is, this is pretty good, right? So mm -hmm. 
I watched it, and then after that, I kind of looked it back up, and that's when we met up, and we I ended up getting the rest of the Oscar nomination films for Best Picture. Mm-hmm. I started watching kind of some of the other ones, and I'm thinking, okay, so, you know, American Sniper's pretty good, but there is that fake baby scene, and, uh, you know, some is okay, but it's a little bit dull, and, yeah, I heard about all this. And then there's the theory of everything, which I'm going to have to watch again because, to be perfectly honest, I fell asleep. <laughs> So yeah. I mean, to be, I just, I it's back to the point of how I don't understand if it doesn't win. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where it has to be the best picture. Mm. It's not just the best picture this year, though. I think it's the best picture of In probably the last ten few, to fifteen. Yeah, it's really fucking well made. I think I, that's obviously just my opinion, but yeah, I'm, yeah, that's I'm fucking confident in that goddamn opinion right that's there. What, that's what we're here for, and it's not like we don't know our shit at least a little bit. <laughs> A little bit. Um, but, yeah, you're right. It is, like, it can't not be the best made picture, or at least the best directed, produced, edited picture. Like, because it is, you know? <laughs> it's, um, I don't know. Those biopics, you're right, you never do, you never really know what you're going to get. Sometimes you get a real, a really good one. Sometimes you get, like, Lincoln <laughs> or something well, that's... Yeah, I mean, like, the old, well, because even with this, the only film that's in the running for uh, Best Picture nomination that even has even close to the artistic style that this does is Birdman, mm-hmm. or The Virtue of Ignorance. And, I mean, when I watched that, I was super impressed because I was... It thinking, had a lot of technically cool yeah, stuff it, in it. it, yeah. it, it, it again, it's one of those ones that's just visually gorgeous in that regard, too, but... You can tell that a lot of that's digital filmmaking, whereas this is 100% back to the roots, except obviously not on actual film. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was filmed using film. I really? Mean, yeah, I mean, that just seems Wes Anderson y to do, right? <laughs> I don't know for I could look into it, but. I, I feel like you should look into that, and we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you with that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I may have been speaking but, out of turn there. But he doesn't do CGI, right? If he needs something that doesn't exist, he fucking paints it or something, you know? <laughs> like, he, yeah. he builds it, or he gets a model made, or something like that. And yeah, that, true, true enough. And that's fucking... Nobody does that shit anymore, you know? No one does that shit anymore, because it's easier. But doing um, doing it the real handcrafted way, you get something special that... Uh, I'd really like to see this like on film at like an old school theater or something like that. It just would fit. Oh, it would fit, awesome. right? Yeah. Cuz I didn't see this in theaters unfortunately cuz I don't even know if it got a wide release. I don't ever remember it being in yeah, theaters. See, that's what I mean, I don't even remember it coming out. I remember it coming out and seeing the trailer. I'm like, "Oh, it looks like another, you know, Wes Anderson film. It'll be, you know, witty and unique and whatnot." And then it hit Netflix and whatnot. And we gave it a couple watches and like Okay, no, this is actually something special. He's gone a little bit above and beyond. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's it's delightful. It's fucking delightful. I'm trying to find if he filmed it on actual film or not. That's just kind of funny because I feel like this is literally the first thing we've ever seen or even talked about with each other where neither one of us had anything to complain about. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's ever happened. And we're talking about a lot of films. Since yeah, we've reviewed <laughs> probably 50-ish films since we started doing this. I guess um, Wolf of Wall Street, we both loved that a whole lot. But That's true. Yeah. Mm. I'd still say this, this is fucking light years beyond that. Mm. This opinion. is... Oh yeah, this is a whole other breed of, of film. And it's so... It just... It makes me happy to see that... It's like people playing jazz music modern, you know? Like, people that keep something old alive and well. And this is a highlight of that for film. And I'm sure it'll make its way into, like, the film reserve and all that. And it'll be a treasure for quite some time, blah, 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 blah. I hope so, because it's fucking great. Better be. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But, Um, I mean, realistically, I think, given the fact that neither of us really has anything negative to say about it, should we maybe go ahead and give it a rating? Yeah. I don't have anything bad to say about it. If you have something bad to say about it, it's a fault in yourself. <laughs> not <laughs> not the film. Uh, definitely. And I'm sorry to say that, but it's true. Um, yeah, we can go... We can it's, give it. it's the only film I would ever say that about. I, it's very it's, strange. It's weird for me to see this because, I mean, a lot of my favorite films are from 
But, I mean, for, for instance, one of my favorite films is Arsenic and Old Lace, right? <laughs> which I believe that's from the early 50s. But uh, mm-hmm. it's hard for me to say that a film nowadays is, is one of the best things I've ever seen. And this truly takes the cake. That's what I, I mean. Like, this is one that sh- will fall in line with the best films ever made, I think. It has to, yeah. Mm-hmm. I have to agree. And I don't... I, I don't want to see Wes Anderson peak <laughs> with this. I really hope he doesn't because this is fucking phenomenal. I'd like to see him continue to uh, bring that level of craftsmanship to his stories, and I hope he does. But he might he might peak with this. I'm okay with it. <laughs> Whatever. This film is fantastic. Um, it's I don't know. Do you have a rating handy? It's hard to uh, ten. It's out. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I was really I was really debating between a 9.5 and a 10, but I can't do 9.5 cuz there's nothing that's 0.5 wrong with it. Ex- no. You know, there's nothing except maybe I didn't see it in theaters. Like that's a bum. <laughs> that's a bummer. <laughs> we lose. We each lose a, a point for that. Yeah, we I, just lose a, lo- a point of life. Yeah, we just I lost g- a life point. <laughs> Again, back to my earlier statement, that's a problem with me, not the film. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that I didn't go to TIFF or wherever the fuck this was premiering and see it because I'm sure it would have been just wonderful. Yeah, it's got to be a 10 out of 10, and I'm pretty safe saying this is the best film of 2014. Pretty safe saying that. There's a lot of great movies, some that, some that may be better in other aspects, but overall, I don't know if anything can touch this. 10 out of 10 from me. Any closing thoughts on it, sir? If if you haven't seen it, you have to. It's one of those ones where you have to. Whether you like it or not, after it's done, you have to see it. A lot of people don't like Citizen Kane, but a mm. lot of people also are born under power lines. So, I mean, it's yeah, kind of the same situation point. if you don't like this. Yeah, it's one of those things that um, if you have any appreciation for film, this is on the 2C list. Just like, you know, you may or may not enjoy Citizen Kane. It's still an important film for a number of reasons. So is this movie. And it's, you know, it just happens to be great on top of it. I love it. Fucking love it. Gonna buy it on Blu-ray when it comes out. If it has an Two fucking coming. thumbs up. Big thumbs up for both of it. Two big thumbs up. Really happy to see Wes Anderson transcend the whole witty for no damn good reason thing that he had going on a little bit. And he has. He's great. Nice <laughs> and, on uh, level. New level for Wes Anderson. Congratulations, sir. Congratulations, and that's you know that's what a career is all about. I guess you're supposed to get better, and he certainly has. This is his best work. Yeah, ten out of ten. Thanks for watching our review of the Grand Budapest Hotel, Um, and we're gonna do. We have five more movies to do, I believe. Something like that. Yeah, five Um, to do in the upcoming weeks. Spoiler alert: They're probably not gonna be as good as this one. But you should still watch them because uh, we're doing every. We have uh, the theory of everything, imitation game, fox catcher, Selma, Selma, and Birdman to do, and that's all coming up in the next couple of weeks. And then of course the Oscars, and we talk about the winners and all that fun stuff. So you know, leave a like if you enjoy what we do here. My name has been the Habitual Pixels. My co-host, Big Nasty Productions. Our channels, our work down below. Give us a check. Check us out. You know. If you want to hear two bearded fellows talk about movies, we do it often. And, uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by. Bye.